everyone, Dwayne England, Potsky Bait Company, and we are back here in the bait lab. Today we're going to talk about curing mature salmon eggs and uh, some things you can do that will make a more quality bait, one that I think you'll appreciate and one that actually fishes better. Longer duration on the hook, a little more durable bait, and uh, there's a few things we do to achieve that. So we've uh, talked in the past about fire cure, how it's a phenomenal cure for salmon row for fishing for salmon in the rivers, tributaries, what have you. Um, these eggs here are from Chinook salmon out of a tributary river, so they're quite a bit more mature. And what I mean by that is these skeins have begun to open up, the skin is beginning to break down on the uh, sides of them, so you don't have as much connective skin keeping all the eggs together. So when the skin becomes loose and the eggs become a little more loose, using something like a fire cure isn't going to toughen up the skein and make it a little more durable bait that uh, will fish multiple casts. It will cure the eggs and they will catch fish. You're gonna probably find that you get a cast or two out of them, they milk out relatively quick and the looseness of the skein that you started with, they begin to come apart relatively easy. So oftentimes we get asked, well, how do we toughen up our uh, skein to make it uh, last a few more casts or make it a little more durable? So years ago, I started using Baraxo Fire, which now understanding this cure, there's no sulfites in here. This is ideally engineered to cure roe that will fish for steelhead at salts and sugars and borax. And so it does have properties in there that do, in fact, toughen the skin or the skein just a little bit, going to make it a little more durable bait. Um, without the sulfites, though, you may question whether or not it has enough bite stimulants to entice salmon. Yes, it does. Uh, it works very well on its own. I like to utilize Baraxo Fire a majority of the time in the fall when I've harvested eggs out of mature salmon because of this reason right here, looseness and skein. And Baraxo Fire works very well. I do add a few things to it to make it even a little more enticing to salmon with some bite stimulants and whatnot. I will take a full bottle of Baraxo Fire. I'm gonna mix in a quarter to a half cup of white refined sugar, okay? Quarter to half a cup. I like to have differences in cures. A full half cup mixed with this uh, full bottle, 32 ounce bottle of Baraxo Fire. I'm gonna fish those eggs low in a system, low in a tributary, tidal water influence. Those, those fish seem to gravitate towards a sweet tooth and they like that little bit sweeter bait coming right out of the salt. As they get up further in the system, it seems like they switch to more of a sulfite and sodium based type of cure with less sweeten, uh, sweetness to it because they've been out of the salt water for a bit. So uh, sugary mixes near the salt water in the estuary waters and just above and of course higher in the system I go more to a sodium and a sulfite. So quarter to half cup sugar depending where you're fishing if, uh, if that matters to you. So. Half cup, we'll say a half cup of sugar with this 32 ounce bottle, two heaping tablespoons of our firepower krill powder. I like to add the extra krill and a heaping tablespoon of sodium sulfite. I like to put in one heaping tablespoon of sodium sulfite to this 32 ounce bottle. You may think that that doesn't sound like enough or it's not much. Well, I don't want it to be a strong sulfite based cure when curing these looser eggs but I do want to have enough in there that does add, in fact, bite stimulants and things that attract uh, salmon, fall salmon. So I have these eggs pretty much cleaned up. This one here has a little bit of blood left in it, so we're going to get the excess blood out of here. Now I can take the flat side of my knife and, and push that blood down to the main vein that runs at the bottom of your skein, and I can pop a little hole right there. We're gonna just use a paper towel and I can, I can move that blood along the vein there. Now these eggs have been in the fridge for a couple days, so the blood begins to coagulate and get a little bit tougher to move. So um, if you find you have a little trouble moving that along, you can put a little bit of water on the top side of this skein here just to keep it uh, moist, and it helps to keep the knife from tearing into the skin, allows it to glide easier. And see, we're moving that blood right down out of that vein there, getting a majority of it out of the egg. Why do we get the blood out? Well, the eggs cure really well. The blood tends to not cure so good and adds a little bit of spoilage to your eggs and begins to have a, a foul odor. So I always try to get as much blood out as I can. And that there is pretty darn clean. So now I got these large skeins. 
They're mostly opened up. This one here has a little skin intact up here. I'm going to butterfly these open a little bit just to make sure we get the cure in there. Also, because they're so large, we're going to cut these in half, okay, and kind of make them into smaller sections just so they're easier to handle uh, as we cure them. This one here is completely opened up. I don't even need to butterfly that one. And this one here will cut into three separate sections. A sharp knife is very beneficial when you're taking these apart. It pops far less eggs and um, gets right through the skin, doesn't tear the eggs or, or destroy them. So now we got these opened up and I'm just trying to stack them on this paper towel. I like to add the cure while the eggs sit on a paper towel because as you'll see when I pick this up, <laughs> if it all stays together, it's easy to put it into the gallon Ziploc bags that I like to cure the eggs in. So now I have my eggs ready to go, blood free, opened up, ready to accept the cure. I have my pre-mixed bottle of my Braxel Fire with my sugars and my Firepower Krill powder. I love that extra krill. I really think it is a great bite stimulant. You need to put that on your eggs if you're not doing so. And of course, a little bit of sodium sulfite. Now, this is not a real hot cure, so the so-called burning of the eggs doesn't really happen. I don't have the sulfites in there weakening the membrane of the eggs. I actually have more borax and salt in here with the added sugar that is going to toughen. So I can put a, put a pretty good amount on here uh, because I'm just simply putting it on the egg side. I'm not going to turn them over and, and do it all on the other side as well. Now I take my gallon Ziploc. I've marked on there uh, my uh, identifier for my number two recipe or which is the mixture of my Baraxo fire here. And with the paper towel, I can just simply pick it all up, slide it into the bag, and dump it off like that. Now, if I look in here and I think I need to add a little more cure, that's the nice thing about the wide open bag. I can sprinkle a little more on here and call it good. So, I like to leave enough air in the bag that allows me to roll these around and get the cure working into the eggs, okay? And what I mean, you'll notice uh, as it begins to work, the moisture gets drawn out of the eggs, the, the uh, juice starts coming out of the eggs, and you'll start building a certain volume of juice in here. One thing I like to do always is to add extra color to my eggs. I really like the fire dye, the dark red, <clears throat> as it adds a tremendous amount of color. Now, maybe where you fish, uh, you use orange, you know, or the, or the uh, pink. Uh, that all works as well. The UVs in, in the pink especially is fantastic for certain fisheries. I like here in the Pacific Northwest, we fish a lot of dark red eggs. And the Baraxel Fire adds a lot of color, but I like to add even a little extra color. And I like to add a little extra juice. Now you don't have to, but sometimes I will take these and add a little bit of the Potsky Nectar because it's just egg juice. And it helps uh, just plump those eggs up and volumize them even more so that when they're going down river, they're sending down a tremendous scent trail that you can literally see when your eggs hit the water, okay? And then I'll take the fire dye. This is basically a bottle of four to five tablespoons. I'll add about a tablespoon per bag. And I know just past history, there are a couple squeezes on that. I'm getting about a tablespoon into there. Again, that's just gonna add extra color. Don't worry about the fact that it runs down the sides. I mean, that's why I purposefully spray it off the side of the bag so I don't just put it right on top there. This allows me to now roll these around and over the course of time, all the eggs are going to cure evenly. The, uh, the color distribution is going to be equal simply by tumbling these around. Again, I leave plenty of air in the bag so there's room and separation. And it allows me to, you know, massage that cure into these eggs. So, 24 hours. 12 will work. I like 24 hours at room temperature. Allows the eggs to juice out maximum potential and then reabsorb as much juice as they can. So I will literally take these every couple hours during the daytime as these sit in my garage. I come out here, I tumble this bag around uh, every so often and keep that, uh, keep that juice moving, keep the color distribution equalized and just really maximize the potential for these eggs to cure. Again, it'll release a bunch of juice. When you see all that uh, liquid in the bag, do not dump it out. That does not mean you've added too much cure. It's exactly what you need the eggs to do. Let them juice out, and then after a while, they begin to absorb that back in, and you're gonna find that there's far less juice in your bag by the next day. One thing you can do is you can, you can leave it laying flat, 
uh, overnight or uh, after about 12 hours or so I'll even you know set those down to the bottom there and make sure they're completely surrounded by juice at that point you'd have a lot more juice in the bag and I will push the air out of the bag okay and I will roll that down and I will let that sit there in that juice for the next 12 hour phase and it reabsorbs all that juice back into the eggs and really the next day when you check on these you're going to see it's going to look very much like this there's not going to be a lot of juice left in the bag because it's all reabsorbed back in but it's a it's a uh, process that has to take place over a 12 to 24 hour period um, so these eggs would be much more plump uh, a lot more color equally distributed throughout and uh, then you know they're definitely cured so after 24 hours and they've reabsorbed the juice I can take these now and I can put them in the fridge for a few days I can go ahead and freeze them I can uh, put them into a, a bait tray or some type of container uh, get them ready for the boat or for the uh, the river bank they're ready to fish I would give it uh, a full day in the garage a full day in the refrigerator and then you can fish them so just a little uh, Things you, a couple of little things you can do there to toughen up mature eggs uh, this fall season and uh, give that a try. That recipe has worked for me for years, utilizing the Baraxo fire for your fall uh, Chinook eggs or Coho eggs. It does really well and I think you'll be happy with the results. All right, that's gonna do it for us here in the Bait Lab today. Give that a try and thanks for watching. Husky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, make sure to go to Potsky.com. And as a thank you for watching Potsky Outdoors, we're going to show you a coupon code to be used for 10% off your next order.